And now that Emily started the recording, I'll let her take it away and then we'll all circle back. Welcome everyone. Good to see you all. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Emily. Um, I use all pronouns and I'm the local peace economy coordinator at Code Pink. And if you have been here before, um, you know that we like to start with a piece of grounding and a piece of culture. Um, we often talk about in this work that it all starts with culture. And so we often start there in these calls. And tonight I'm going to share a poem called Making Peace by Denise Levertoff. Um, so before we do that, just ask everyone to make sure that they're on mute um, to minimize background noise. And then I'm just gonna take a breath and invite you to feel into your body, feel your feet on the ground, if they're on the ground or any parts of your body that are in contact with the ground or the seat below you. And taking a breath and just preparing yourself to, to drop in and be present together. Making peace. A voice from the dark called out, the poets must give us imagination of peace to oust the intense, familiar imagination of disaster. Peace, not only the absence of war, but peace, like a poem, is not there ahead of itself, can't be imagined before it is made, can't be known except in the words of its making, grammar of justice, syntax of mutual aid. A feeling towards it, dimly sensing a rhythm, is all we have, until we begin to utter its metaphors, learning them as we speak. A line of peace might appear if we restructure the sentence our lives are making, revoked its affirmation of profit and power, questioned our needs, allowed long pauses. A cadence of peace might balance its weight on that different fulcrum, peace, a presence, an energy field more intense than war, might pulse then, stanza by stanza, into the world, each act of living, one of its words, each word a vibration of light, facets of the forming crystal. Thank you, Emily. That is such a great poem to start today with. Very powerful. She's so brilliant. Um, so let's just start with, do we have anyone new that wants to introduce themselves? Let us know uh, why you've joined, um, where you're from. We'd love to meet you. So just uh, raise your hand and... Um, Hi, Caroline Hurley. How are y'all? <laughs> Hi, where, yeah. Um, go ahead. I'm so sorry. Where are you from? Uh, New Jersey. Uh, my daughter is going to join me in a moment. She's just getting dog food ready. Um, we're joining, obviously, you know, for many reasons, but uh, we especially want to be able to uh, connect more with their, our community and uh with like-minded people and um it, it seems to be we're going to have to rely on community which that's the way it should be anyway you know everybody should be able to rely on everybody else around them as we think anyway and um well we're hoping to learn something here tonight and hopefully heal a bit because this has been one tragic year and uh we know it's not about us, but it is affecting us. Thank you and welcome. Thank and what's you. your daughter's name, just so we know? Sure, Haley. Haley, great. <laughs> um, and then um, Jay, I, I'm not sure if I'm, how does the name? Jay, um, okay. yeah, you see the pronouns. I am in... Um, so-called Portland, Oregon, the ancestral homelands of the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ron and the Chinookan people. And um, yeah, I'm here because um, I've always been interested in cooperative economics. And um, yeah, I organize like in my day job around um, economics justice issues affecting immigrants, refugees, and uh, Black Indigenous people of color. And um, yeah, uh, I also feel like uh, capitalism and the U.S. empire is on pretty shaky ground. And uh, at some point, it might not be here, and we need to know what's going to replace it, and we need to be starting to build that now. So I'm doing everything I can to, like, make those connections and 
really start building um, for for a different future because um, you know capitalism is quite young and it hasn't been around. This this is not how humans have been, and so um, you know how are we reconnecting to our ancestral ways of of knowing, and also building for a new unknown future. So thanks. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. Welcome. Welcome home. <laughs> um, so is there anyone else that's new that wants to share? Hi, hi Liz. I'm yeah, um, sorry. I don't, I wasn't finding the, the hand thing on the hair. So um, I'm Liz. <laughs> I'm from Seattle. And um, I just wanted to be a part of a group that's not on just social media because uh, it's been a pretty small group of people, a uh, few people in my family and um, at work that I can talk about this with. And so um, it, the, I, the idea of a peace economy really intrigued me. And as I started to look through some of the things on the website and the um, workbook, it was just, it, um, it just really spoke to me. So I thank you for having this space and uh, I, I late Carolyn with your um, feeling about the year and uh, just a little teary right now just it's an emotional yeah. time yeah um it's kind of why today's going to be a little different um usually we teach around something but uh, I think Emily and I were feeling that everybody needed to just feel a little into the moment especially on this anniversary um, and how much we've had to weather this um, this last year. So for those of you who are new, there's also recordings from the past and we get together every other week just to be together in community because we're working in our individual communities, but to come up to the space where we nourish ourselves, reflect on some of these ideas and um, some of the pivots uh, so that we can be doing that together as a, as a community that's more kind of across the country and also modeling what you could be doing in your own community. So it's 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 also a modeling for, for your own local work. Um, anyone else that n is new that wants to raise their hand, say hi and introduce themselves? Um, Rachel. Hi, yeah, my name is Rachel. I'm that this is my first meeting. I have been organizing for like anti-war stuff um, since 2014. So a little bit, a uh, little bit of time now. Um, sorry, I have a, uh, a bachelor's in war and a master's in economics. So I'm um, really excited to hear about this group and to also like engage in conversations that are really important. Um, I'm from San Diego, California. And as some of you might know, we have here the largest military presence in the country, and we are also the most unaffordable metropolitan area now in the country. Um, and so the war economy is, yeah, really something that impacts my city. And I'm just excited to learn how to organize against it here. And yeah, so good to meet you all. So thank you so much for being a part of this. And Rachel, what is your city? I'm in San Diego in California. Okay. Okay, um, cool. Um, and Stan, did you want to say something? Um, can't find you, Stan. Raise your hand if you do. Anyone else that is new? Um, oh, has a cold, but hi. Oh, hi, Stan. Thank you. Um, Anyone else before? Ah, oh, there we go. Hi, Joe. Hi, I'm Joe uh, from Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, my friend Cedar, who's also on here, invited me. Um, just interested in connecting to something larger than my world, which is kind of small these days. And uh, there's a sense of um, I watch things uh, and I'm sort of numb to them because I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> just numb to things not take not making opinions not taking stands and it just feels like I'm a little numb so the idea of connecting larger and um you know opening up so glad to hear that you're here thanks thank you and thank you for joining um as we know that one of the things the war economy intends us to be is numb um so that is um on purpose um 
the war economy culture uh, creates the conditions for us to be numb and lonely and afraid and um, disconnected and overworked and um, other. Um, and so that's that's the war economy's intention. And so, yes, uh, what we try to do here is notice that. So you're already here noticing and figure out like how to practice peace economy, which brings us out of that um, into the vibrancy th that is life. Um, so, um, you know, and also, uh, Rachel, uh, we're, you know, anti-war activists, but really um, this came out of my work as an anti-war activist, realizing that I can't end war until I end the war economy, that war just serves the war economy. And we are all part of that war economy culture that is uh, killing us, our community and the planet. And yet um, there is a peace economy, the giving, sharing, caring, thriving, relational, resilient economy without which we would not be alive. But we forget it. We've been lied to about it. It gets devalued and privatized and smushed. Um, and so uh, here we are to bring it bring it back to life, give it life. And like in the poem, it's like it becomes our daily practice, which is peace. And I think that's the most important part of this work. And I think it's what we're not acculturated to because we're acculturated out of ourselves, out of the moment, out of the space of being in, in presence. And it is really in each moment that we're creating the future or creating peace. And Right now, I've been working on an essay with Danica, the, the co-director of Code Pink, around feminism and what it is. And we get stuck in all these concepts and possibilities and things out there when we have no idea what we can create together. Um, but we know we have already created something quite hellish together. Um, you know, to think that this hell that we're watching that is depressing our hearts and souls is paid for with 65% of our tax dollars. I mean, that's pretty disturbing. And so when it's um, it's got very few hands on it and they're all psychopaths, what can we do with hearts that care about peace may feel very disconnected, but it has to start at home um, with our communities in building something alternative to the war economy because everyone thinks that that's it and it's not, it's death. Um, and that's what we're watching. We're watching it in, you know, in front of us, unable to be stopped, a, a madness of, of death. And this war economy, late stage capitalism, whatever you want to call it, I call it a war economy just because capitalism tends to be a triggering word. Um, and it's really about war. Um, so it is, look, we're watching it on all sides. Look at this, you know, a hurricane that is about to hit Florida and look at what just happened to the South and look what's happening in Gaza that's now moved to the West Bank that now moving to Lebanon, that's moving to Iran. It's, it's coming at us in all directions. How do we stay? in spirit and heart and soul in um, rooted in what we know that is beautiful, that is love, that is peace, that is kindness, that is a respect for life. You know, how do we stay there and take the steps to be in relationship with life, even as that's happening? And um, one of the really exciting things that uh, happened in our, we we did this, we're doing these monthly webinars and the one this month on, on um, co-ops was Sassy actually saying what I'm always talking about here, which is when you're building your local peace economy, your activism will be steroids better. And Sassy, you know, proved that in the, in the webinar this, this last week about how when we are building our local peace economies, that building of community, that creation of trust, that creation of relationship and care makes us even more potent 
when we're engaged in our activism. So we know we know what to do when it's time to do it. That that part we have covered. But the building of the actual life cells that can get us through what we're watching is where we need to take our attention to. And um the um yeah yeah, um, thanks, Dan. Uh, you may be sick, but you are very on it. Um, <laughs> so the, we wanted to stop today and instead of really talking about a practice or something, really ground us in ourselves um, because what is happening is meant to take us out of ourselves, is meant to stress us, is meant to numb us, is meant to make us want to just crawl in a hole and cry. Um, and how in the face of things that are unbearable and, you know, and I have to say, I cry many times in a day, but it's in the peace economy work that we learn to be present with it, feel, move into the grief, move into the care, move into the celebration, move into the joy and making those practices, I must say, I probably cycle it, you know, like 16 times a day to not get stuck, to not let be used by, to not be in reaction to, but to continually be in the relationship with that life is relationship with, and all of this horror is meant to take us away. And um, I find that when I find myself distressed or taken away or just like I overwhelmed, I'll just pick up my bookmark and start practicing one of the peace economy practices, whatever speaks to me in that moment. What is it to practice presence right now? What is it to practice generosity right now? What is it to practice connection right now? And even if I just say like, connection, who do I need to talk to? I'll walk out my door and go just speak to the neighbor. Like, what can in what way can I ground myself in something real and true? Um, that news today that we saw the the um the book that just came out that said that Biden believe you know Biden spoke that um Netanyahu is an effing bad man, an effing bad man, and still knowing that sends him weapons. That, that disconnect is not just in him. That disconnect is in everyone that thinks a genocide is okay. When you witness that, you say, there's something wrong with the connective tissue of their brain. So we've become acculturated to living in words instead of reality, instead of what is. So the practice for all of us what is true, what is real. And that happens in relationship. We know what is in relationship because we, you know, we can never see ourselves. We even know ourselves in relationship with someone else. Um, so we have ideas of who we are. They're usually a little distorted. Um, so, you know, it's like how to be in reality, how to be in relationship creating this community that we say is the first practice of the local peace economy. What is your community that you're gonna be committed with? Um, and finding those eight people that you can be committed with because to practice is to reflect, to say, oh my God, that was hard. You know, like we do these every other week. It's like, oh, I when you said that, I felt that the, the, the moments to reflect about what is inside us? What what gets stuck? Who are we? Where is our pain? Where is the stuck place inside of us that needs the courage to be open, to flow, um, to um, receive? And, um, you know, I, I learned something from one of my teachers this last week uh, or a couple of weeks ago, and I just want to share it because it was like, it it's, I think, one of the things that makes life scary um, it's like not to show up vulnerable because vulnerable is where you show up willing to be hurt. That's in a deep love relationship where, you know, as a parent, as a lover, 
the end of this relationship is pain, whether that's death, you know, that, that, that vulnerability is real. You have, you have offered yourself to the pain that love ultimately will deliver. It will deliver the most joy you ever had, but ultimately it comes to an end. But in all other situations, all you have to do is show up available, not vulnerable. And I think so often we think about the pains that we have had in our lives, often that have come from those we love the most and think about them in relationship to a particular moment. So it's not, I wouldn't say versus vulnerable. It's like there is vulnerability and there is availability and we get to choose how we show up. But um, too often we think showing up in life is to show up vulnerable when really it's just to show up available. And um, if we can show up available, we are therefore open to taking in the information that is there for us. Um, because, you know, like we never know everything. Everything is the piece of the elephant to try to like have a sense of what is there. But knowing what is happening relationally is going to help us understand better the bigger picture because we don't have our fingers on the big picture. We are not at the diplomacy table with um, Blinken and, Net and Netanyahu, um, which is, you know, isn't even a diplomacy table. It's still a table about power. But what we can know is what it is to be in relationship locally and with each other. And starting there may not feel like you're stopping the war in Gaza, but I promise you, you are stop, you are you are building peace. Like the poem said, each breath, each step, each act, from the place of that desire, from the place of what do I want it to look like, who do I want to be in it, what do I want to offer in it, that's peace. And what's happening is in this world, too few are able to offer that because of the contortion of the war economy on our lives. So um, really being able to recognize in this moment, we've been through a, a hell of a year. We've been through a century and a year. Um, the way, if you think of where we were last September and where we are now, the the amount of growth a little baby does we're like past that you know of how many things we had to comprehend how many things that we held as true have been frayed um and and just to witness that the entire world cannot stop a few madmen that's a hard thing to grapple with a very hard thing to grapple with to live in a country that is owned by rich people with a Zionist agenda, that, you know, that's hard to grapple with. Where all the levers that we've pulled have been ineffective to do the end result, but not ineffective to move us forward. I think that's the other thing that the war economy does. It makes us impatient. It makes us feel more powerful than we are um, because we live in an empire. So we have a little bit of empire thinking instead of relational thinking. Um, so change happens slowly and we are creating that change. If we think from October 7th of last year to now, a lot of hearts and minds have been changed. A lot of hearts and minds have gotten courageous. A lot of people have been able to better articulate what they're feeling. So it's to witness the smaller things, to witness, yes, it is changing, that the floor is being created for the future. I mean, uh, Emily, I'm going to ask you to share with everybody in the response email. There was an amazing um, piece that was put out on the anniversary that was very short. It was, you You were in 2040 with young kids and their grandparents 
at a memorial for the genocide and you were looking at little shoes and you were looking at the faces of mothers holding babies and you were looking from Korea to Japan to France to Italy, you were looking at these things globally. And then once you'd looked at them for a few minutes, then it was the grandchild saying, where were you? To the grandparent, where were you? What did you do? And the grandparent looking, you know, I don't know. You know, like, where was I? What happened? And looking in shame. So we are building the path to the moment where humanity wakes up. We are also building the arc that gets through this storm that is just starting. We are not at the end of this storm. This storm is just starting. So it's you know, it also builds our, our confidence, our courage, our, our uh, tensile strength. You know, if we, if we look at some of these voices over the last year and watch the tensile strength that has grown in the, in the ringing of their voice, how many times that they had to say it over and over again till it became the very marrow of their bones, till it speaks to us without the words, that 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 grounding in clarity in I stand with humanity, um, that uh, that that is done with patience and time. Remember, like one of the things is time. So the war economy is expecting this, but change happens. Real change, which is what we want, the change to peace takes time and we are laying that groundwork that Tanahasi Coates's voice is in mainstream media you know calling out um you know somebody that's been anointed as one of them stripping them away and exposing them as the bullies they are that people are now disrupting um press conferences um, in the White House, the, the courage is getting stronger and stronger. And it is those in the place that is nearest the machine that can do that. But we here, we're not there. We're here, in, we're here in our communities. Everyone needs to do what is theirs. You're here because you're in a community and you recognize where your work is and it's in community. Um, so, you know, I always look for the whistleblowers and thank them, but I'm never in a position of power to be a whistleblower. So we can always celebrate those that use their adjacency to power to scratch at it even more than we can. So, um, oh, good, Stan. Uh, the message, it takes, it's a very quick read. It took me four hours, I think. Um, if you want yourself to be nourished, if you want to feel strength, and I think the thing I wanted to talk about the message today was it's a very good articulation of our work. It's a person who studied very hard, who stands on the soldier, shoulders of the ancestors of his Black liberation movement, who went to school at Howard University. But the thing we don't notice in doing all the right things and listening to all the right voices is this war economy for us to succeed in it. We have to contort ourselves to succeed. And what he hadn't recognized was that contortion of his thinking so that he could end up where he thought the good place was to end up. So that's the war economy contortion that he was saved by his ancestors because it was the witnessing. It's the thing we're talking about here, the being in relationship with the war economy in your community, breaking bed with the person, talking about it. He describes the relationship. It's what changed him. The thing that we're all assigning ourselves to do locally, it is exactly what changed ta quotes. It was the relationship. It was being at the meal table. It was witnessing the violence. And then 
being able to reach back to his ancestors, the values of which he held inside of him. So when we say you get together in your community, make your commitment and you decide on your values, well, those values were there, but he didn't realize how far being in the war economy had taken him away from practicing them or being able to see the violence that he was living inside of. And so it's, I think it's a good read to understand the war economy, peace economy work because he literally takes himself out of the war economy, out of his dream of being a reporter at Harper's, but realizing that's like a, you know, a, a deal with the devil <laughs> because to get there, you have to be safe, you know, to get there, you've had to agree to some things. And, um, he, for all the reasons he can be liberated, has become liberated, but the Palestinian people did that for him. And it's the same as we, you know, we've said on this call, the Palestinian people are liberating us in their stand, um, in their stand for being humanized, in their stand as living in a peace economy. What in their stand for never forgetting who they are, where they come from, and what they're committed to. They're not committed to a war economy. They're not committed to violence. They're committed to peace. They're committed to educating themselves to be caretakers of each other. Look at who the Israelis murdered first, the doctors, the journalists, the caretakers. You know, today they're shooting the people that are you know, trying to protect people. It's, as um, Alice Water Walker said last week when we were speaking together in, in Berkeley, the war economy is envious of the peace economy, just as it can't bear to be near truth. And those don't make us safe when we practice them because we become dangerous. We become dangerous as peacemakers. We become dangerous as truth tellers. We become dangerous to their, um, their project of war. And what we see now is all the US has left are weapons and war. And um, it is you know, really up to us inside of this belly of the beast to be cultivating with those nearest us the practices of peace, um, both for the moment and for the future, on the shoulders of the values that bring us here today, that we know this is not right. We know this is not necessary. We know there's another way. Um, so um, I, I want to let Emily share um, so that we can then go into breakouts. Um, she's going to give you a, a tool to connect to each other um, in the breakouts um, to, so that we can share in this moment uh, on this anniversary with our commitment to be cultivating peace. Emily. Thanks, Jody. Just going to take that in. Um, yeah, feeling feeling your words deeply. Um, and yeah, tonight I'm thinking about the hurricane, the second hurricane coming through and, um, and family I have there and in reflecting on what we wanted to share on this call, Jody and I also talked about the way that the different responses to crisis in a peace economy what we're seeing in Palestine and Lebanon, like Jody was saying, people coming to each other's aid, taking care of each other, and in response to a hurricane, um, a lot of not everyone, but a lot of people waiting to be to be saved um, by an institution that is not equipped or even necessarily meant to um, to help in real meaningful ways, and the ways that mutual aid um which is a practice of the peace economy and a practice in community is what's going to keep each keep us safe 
together in community. And so I was thinking about mutual aid and thinking about how the war economy hides our gifts in plain sight. And as I've worked to take back my life from the war economy, I've had to understand the ways that I've internalized the value system of the war economy and impose that on myself, seeing only parts of myself as valuable or something that I have to offer. And this is still very much a process, but it's been so liberating to discover what I can offer beyond what I've been told I have to offer within the war economy. The war economy reduces us to how much money we have and the skills that it can easily exploit, when in reality, we all have so many other gifts that we can offer each other and offer each other in community. And this has everything to do with mutual aid and responding in a way that serves life during crisis, which as Jody was talking about, we are in poly crisis all the time. Um, because if we don't see the gifts we have, we're not able to show up to our communities and offer them. And we end up waiting for war economy institutions to save us rather than rooting in our own agency and taking our power back and remembering that we keep each other safe. So before we go into breakout rooms, we're gonna take a few moments to reflect on our gifts and our resources together. So um, if you saw in the um, reminder email to bring a piece of paper and pen or pencil, you can grab that now. And if you don't have it, um, you can either take a moment to get it or um, just you know reflect um, silently by yourself um, and maybe take some notes later. And then we'll, we'll be talking about these in breakout rooms. But so I'm gonna um, share three questions to reflect on. So the first one is, what are three resources you have that are not money? Mm -hmm. So this could be, you know, you can't see it right now, but I have a, a mini library, I guess, of books behind me. It could be tools, um, like, you know, to, you know, build things, construction. It could be knowledge about a particular topic. It could be a, a talent or a skill like singing or playing an instrument or cooking, stories, recipes, space in your home, time. Um, these are all gifts and resources that we have. So the invitation is to um, name three for yourself that are not money. I'll put that in the chat. And then once you have three, choose one of the three resources and reflect on what's the quality of the flow of that resource in your life? What's the energy around the possibility of sharing that resource with your community, with others? Is it blocked? Is there a feeling of stinginess or scarcity or protection or hesitance? Is it free flowing? Does it kind of move and oscillate between these energies? Um, and it, you know, it could be something different as well. But when you think about sharing this resource with your community, what comes up for you? And I know it's not a long time to reflect, but I want to make sure you all have time to share with each other as well. Um, and you can always come back to these questions. Um, so we'll move to the next one, which is, does the flow of that resource as it is right now currently serve the future you want to create and live in? And if not, what needs to shift for you to be able to offer that resource in a way that better aligns with that future? Give you another few moments.
and then we're going to move into breakout rooms. And the invitation is just to share with each other what, what came up for you with these reflections. What did they show you and how do they make you feel? And also what, you know, share with each other what your gifts are. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to put you in breakout rooms. Remember to click on your room. And if I, I might move you around if I see some, a room not filling up. So um, be alert to that also. I sometimes do a little bit of moving around. All right. We'll see you back um, in about 15 minutes. It's great to see you. Bye. Hi. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had good conversation, as always. And please meet yourself when you come back. And we only have a few minutes, but we'd love to hear from a couple people about what came up in your conversation? Anybody would like to share? Jay? Um, so one thing that was interesting, because, you know, we ended up like, you know, talk, talking about a lot of different things, not necessarily answering the questions outright. But I've realized that um, through our conversations, I was sort of like living the thing that I was like planning to talk about, which um, I'm a resource connector. Like I can talk to anybody for like five, 10 minutes and be like, I'll give you a list of, of resources that you can look into that could totally change your life. And like, you know, uh, that, that is like one of my things that I really like pride myself on is like trying to find ways to like find out what people want and like get them connected to that. And so throughout our conversation, you know, they're like talking about like the things they're trying to get into. And I'm like, look this up, look this up. You should look into this. There's this program, there's this thing, there's that thing. And so even though I didn't really like say it out loud, I was like trying, I guess I was showing it a little bit. At least I hope I was. And I hope those resources are, are useful. But um, yeah, it was it was a great conversation. I love that, Jay. And I resonate so much. I feel like I have a file cabinet in my brain and I love, I'm always that friend. It's like, oh, there's this podcast. Oh, there's this book. So yeah, um, thank you for sharing that. And I, I do think that that point of connection um, not just the gift itself, but also the ability to share is is a gift in and of itself. Um, Kathy? Well, I was excited about the person I shared with. I uh, let them name themselves if they want, but this person writes for Wikipedia. And um, also she does Amazon posting so that reviews of books so that... Um, people might be aware of getting more information from different books that they would normally not not pick. But she uh, came out of, she's a retired uh, nurse, I'll just say, and came out of retirement to help with COVID shots. Um, so very interesting. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Kathy. Was that McGregor? <laughs> She's pretty amazing. <laughs> Besides, you know, trying to save the planet from nuclear more weapons and other other things <laughs> in her spare time. Um, anyone else want to share? I just want to say that I was dropped and I'm so sorry. I couldn't get back on and I had to do a lot of things to my phone to get back on here, but it worked. <laughs> well, welcome back. And um, because there's some new folks, um, you know, Emily will share a lot of the tools. Um, you know, next week we'll we'll be more on point for you know sharing it, some skill sharing. Um, always feel free to reach out if you have questions, concerns, needs um, that you know we can help with. I have some very sad news. Emily is moving on to study to be a doula. And I always say when somebody gets a job at the local peace economy, that they, they're going to move from doing to being in probably six months. She lasted longer than I expected. <laughs> so um, she's moving into serving her community instead of this bigger community. Um, next week is her last week. So don't miss because what would we do? You know, like her groundings are so beautiful and nourishing and her care of us. 
Um, it's going to be hard to do without Emily. Um, also, her, her her curation and her capacity to you know give us so much each each every two weeks. We just like we get like a basket full of goodies um, back from her. So my deepest love and admiration for Emily, and I'm going to miss her enormously. I know we all are. So next week's our last week with Emily. So I'm going to, she's going to um, have the whole hour to herself. <laughs> I think we and actually I think have a guest. guest. And we have a guest. Um, we have a very special guest who's been doing this work um, for, I think, three decades in the Bay Area. Um, so a really, really special guest. So share that with your friends. And I look forward to seeing you. And you'll get, um, as promised, some things in the follow up email. Thank you for the new ones. Thank you for everyone who's doing so much for peace with your lives, with your heart, with your love, deepest gratitude. And we'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you all. Bye, Marie. Thanks for joining, Rachel. Thanks for coming, Joe. Thank you. Welcome to the new ones. <laughs> bye, McGregor. Love you. <laughs> bye, I was John. Recalling, <laughs> I, I was going to say one. I was recalling during the breakout room um, when it came to the matter of money. I was reminded of the Beatles who sang, I don't care much for money, money don't <laughs> buy me love. And, and I know that they were all uh, very much opposed to the Vietnam War. So I imagine that's what, at least part of what they meant by the word love. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, we miss that right now. Thank you. <laughs> we need more of that. Bye, Marie. Attila, I hope you're feeling better. Emily, I will miss you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I'll miss you all so much. I was feeling really sad today. <laughs> I mean, about a lot of things, but yeah. Um, yeah. You can always yes, sponsor a call. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> oh, thanks, Marie. <laughs> Feel the same. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. <laughs>